beauties. Okay, so today, a lot going on. I recently purchased the Pure 4-in-1 Love Your Selfie Longwear Foundation and Concealer. Ulta had put it on sale and I actually had been looking at it already because I saw a TikTok saying that it's one of the best new foundations on the market. I personally love Pure, so I was really excited about it. Um, I don't actually think that I've tried a Pure concealer or foundation. I normally use their palettes and things like that. I love pretty much their formula for most of their eyeshadows, their face stuff, their highlighters, all that kind of good stuff. But I really, I don't think that I've ever used anything foundation based for Pure. So I was excited to hear that it was um, a really good product. It does include a nice little pump but because it is a concealer and a foundation in one, which I'm not really sure how that works. I guess it's just buildable is, is what I would say. It's just a buildable foundation because I think the whole thing with concealer normally that I look for is like it's a slightly lighter shade than my foundation. So it gives me some highlight. I Maybe I'm overthinking it. I don't know, whatever, it doesn't matter. Anyway, it does include this nice little wand. And personally, my favorite, one of my favorite foundations is the um, the Tarte uh, Shape Tape Foundation because of that wand. In fact, I have it right here so I can show you guys. This is the one I'm talking about. It is the Shape Tape Matte Foundation and it comes with the same kind of, it's like a bigger sized wand for the Shape Tape concealer. So I think when I'm going to do my foundation, I'm just going to, um, to, to use that wand and we'll see how that works and see if it's buildable or not. That being said, I decided what the hell I've got a ton of pure products. So we're going to do a first impression featuring this particular foundation. I'm also going to try the four in one correcting primer from them. I got this in my boxy charm forever ago and I just haven't used it. So technically another first impression there. And then I also got the pure out of the blue uh, palette, which I picked up when I got the troll set and we did a whole review on that, but I haven't actually used this one yet. Gorgeous colors, very neutral uh, with the exception of like this really gorgeous blue and this really beautiful shimmer, both of which I'm going to highlight today. But the cool thing about this palette is it actually comes with an LED mirror. So I wonder if you can see Nikki. Can you see Nikki? I don't know. Wave. It's like, oh my God, it's, this, it's like a, we're time traveling right now, guys. It's a mirror and a mirror and a, oh, it's, it's cool. Sorry. Anyway, the lights are the, the lights were the point of that. It's got a it's got a light up mirror. I got really distracted there. Sorry. And then I just got a couple like face products, highlighters, uh, contour blushes, things like that that are also pure that I can use. Those are not really the the main point of this. This is just going to be kind of like a pure highlight and a pure first impressions for a bunch of different products. So yes, that's what we're doing today. I also I've been on a quest to, to try and find interesting topics to talk about. Well, that is very lotion-y. That was not what I was expecting. I don't know what I was expecting, but that literally, first of all, it smells like coconuts and it feels like sunscreen. <laughs> it's not a bad thing. I just wasn't expecting it. I guess I was expecting it to be more of like a mattifying primer than like a moisturizing primer, but it just is a correcting primer. It says energize and rescue with aloe, coconut water and probiotics. So that's why it smells like coconut. I was right with that. My discerning nostrils detected that. I could have just read it, but you know what? What's the fun in that? Oh yeah. If I had read anything about this, I would have known what to expect because it's also silicone free and the silicone is what makes it like more of a gel. So I would have known it was going to be more of like a moisture. You know, what's the fun in that though? Anyway, this is going to be a wild ride y'all. Buckle up. Buckle up, buckaroos. I like it. It smells nice and um, it's very lightweight. And you can tell it was definitely a true first impression because I pulled off uh, the tabby thing that goes on top of it. So I literally have never used that. How many months have I had it? I don't know. I couldn't tell you. Moving on. Anyway, we're going to move on to the foundation. Back to the what I was saying before. I've been on a quest to try and come up with fun things to talk about that kind of gives you insight into my life, Nikki's life keeps you entertained while I do my makeup. So you're not just staring at my face and you're like, wow, she's so boring. I don't want to be boring for you guys. I want to give you guys something to enjoy. I want to make, I want to make this worth your time. Your time is valuable. So let's do something with it. I figured we'd go ahead and just like really expose ourselves right now. We'd confess something that I'm not proud of. You got to own who you are as a person. You got to accept where you have, um, what I, I, we're not gonna call it a character flaw. It's not a character flaw. It's just something that like, maybe some people are gonna think less of me because, but you know, you gotta live your life for you, so. Hi, my name is Andy and I am obsessed with uh, reality shows. Like, obsessed. Uh, why did I draw a Hitler stash on? I, that's cool. Now I look like Charlie Chaplin. It's fine. Nikki and I love reality shows, all sorts of reality shows, good, bad, in between. It's awful. If it comes, if it's on TLC, we probably watch it. Just being honest. But we've got some that are really like our favorites. 
And I would say probably my, my top two are probably the two that we watch the most, which would be Below Deck. That comes from like a fascination with just like the whole, uh, the whole lifestyle. If you don't know what Below Deck is, it's about the crew, the people who work on like private super yachts. So they have these really rich customers and it's the deck crew who handle the ship running and, and you know, all of that. And then it's also the stews who handle like serving the guests and everything. Wild, it's, it's so entertaining, I love it. That's not really what we're talking about today. What we're talking about today is probably what I would say is my very favorite. I don't know if Nikki would agree. Would you say it's your favorite too? I think so. And that would be 90 Day Fiance. Now 90 Day Fiance, I think a lot of people know about it. More people than really I thought at first, because at first we watched, I know for a fact, we watched the very first season, like when it aired, because it was hyped up so much. And we were living in Wilmington at the time. It was hyped up and it was one of those things like we kept seeing things about it and we were like, oh, that's awful. Like we're not gonna watch that. And like the day it aired, we were like, it's, it's been a love relationship. I don't even wanna say a love-hate relationship. I love it, I, I'm obsessed with it. It's been a love relationship since the start. So we, we were like OG viewers. This show, the whole concept, is there are people who are applying for the K-1 visa, which is the spousal visa. And basically they have started a relationship with somebody who does not live in America and now they're trying to get them to America and you're watching that process and they only have 90 days to get married after they get here. And you just, in the seasons that they've done it, you just see all sorts of different couples, couples who are genuinely in love, couples who have met in person and then, you know, on for different reasons, on vacation, somebody was studying abroad or, you know, they're on a mission trip, whatever it was, they, they met in some way. Then you see people who just met on the internet, you see all sorts of people. So it's just, you have the couples that you know are doing it for the right reasons and then they're dealing with issues like, outside of that because all couples deal with issues and then you add like the stress of having to get married in 90 days and you know one person has to leave their entire family and lifestyle behind and then they're adapting to a new culture and then you see the couples who like there's no reason they're together other than they just are it's 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 a ride it's a ride okay really quickly take a tangent because we had to stop the camera i am liking the foundation a good amount it's definitely building I'm finding it's taking a little bit of time to actually get it to settle into my skin. It's kind of very tacky, if that makes sense. And by tacky, I mean like, as soon as I lay it down on my skin, when I go to blend it out, it's taking a little bit of time to um, to actually blend out and look natural. That's not necessarily a bad thing. I'm thinking it's probably a combination of the primer absorbing it really well, and also it absorbing into your skin nicely, which hopefully means that it's going to give you a nice finish. I just think it's gonna require a few layers before you kind of get that really nice, like full coverage effect. If that makes sense. There's also, I didn't mention at the beginning, I mentioned it in the haul video. There's like 50 to 60 shades for this particular one. So I did the color match on Ulta. I think it's pretty good. It may be a little yellow for my skin, but I don't really know what the shade I would go with instead is. Cause the one that was a, a slightly darker, I think would be just a touch too dark. And the one that was slightly lighter, I think is a touch too light. So this is probably what I would still go with if I were to reorder it, but I don't dislike it. It is just taking a little bit of time to build it. So it may, you may see me work with it for a hot minute, if that makes sense. Continuing on with 90 Day Fiance, which is um, in my opinion, one of the greatest creations that's ever occurred. So they started with the original 90 Day Fiance and you've, not all the couples stay. I mean, some couples do it for a season. Some couples have been on since the beginning and it just, it just kind of depends. I mean, I mean, there are definitely couples that we watched when it first started that are no longer together. So 2014, this show started, we watched it, the OG. Today, nowadays, there's like 58 variations of this show and it's not enough for me. Let me tell y'all, there are two currently that are new each season. We try and watch the um, Happily Ever After one where they go back and revisit couples that have gotten married and have successfully like moved one person to, um, to America. We've tr we try and watch that when it airs on Sunday nights. Now, I sometimes I'm off Sunday nights into Monday. Sometimes I work Sunday nights into Monday. Right now I'm doing six days. So basically like I work bunch, like probably like two to three weeks in a row at six days. And then I have another uh, one week off. So, so sometimes we get to watch it live. Sometimes we got to watch it on demand, whatever. And then there's uh, 90 Day Fiance the other way now, which is also live. And that's where, which tangent. Stupid name for a show. There's so many things that you could have done with it that besides the other way, like uh, 90 Day Fiance Abroad, how about that? 
90 day fiance, I don't know, reverse, <laughs> reverse, Uno reverse. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not paid thousands to millions of dollars to come up with a single title of a show. I'm just saying their creative team phoned it in on that one. But you know what? There are suckers like me who still watch it every week. So did they really lose? No, I lose, but it's fine. I'm just, I'm triggered by that. I hate the name of that one. Anyway, the whole concept is instead of, instead of somebody from another country moving to America to be with their significant other, the significant other from America moves to the other country. And I gotta say, watching that, man, you really realize how Americans just are so, one, unaware of other people's cultures and two, <laughs> obsessed with their own culture. It's, it's, for, for people that are trying to marry outside of their culture. Too. No clue what the hell to expect. No. Like they're like, oh, I'm moving to, you know, Indonesia. And I have no idea what Indonesian culture is at all. I can't speak anything. I can't order food. I don't know how to ask where the bathroom is. And it's not like they, these people in these relationships have only known each other for like a couple months and now they're getting married. Like most of them have been in like three plus year relationships and they don't know a lick of the language they don't, know, they don't know a damn thing and they're just like yeah we're gonna move there i don't know nothing about nothing and then they refuse to learn and then yeah they have no desire to learn there's one and this is not really the focus we're not we're gonna talk about our favorite like toxic couples because there's so many there's so many there's just one girl and then the 90 day the other way currently and i don't dislike her and I don't dislike the guy that she's going to be with, but they're in, where is he from? So she moves to Jordan, but her whole thing is she's like a social media influencer trying to be a rapper. And she's very like comfortable wearing revealing clothing and stuff like that. There is absolutely nothing wrong with that. That is a very acceptable thing in American culture. I personally think that you should be able to wear whatever you want as a woman but that is not the culture in Jordan. And so she moves to Jordan to be with somebody who is incredibly devoutly Muslim and does, like, like she doesn't want to, she doesn't want to um, convert to Islam. She doesn't want to follow any of the traditions. She doesn't understand why his parents are mad that she doesn't want to do any. And I'm just like, girl, what were you expecting when you moved to a country that is devoutly, they are devout practicers of Islam and they take their culture incredibly seriously. Like, what did you think you were gonna go and change this one? And, and the sad thing is, is I think that she really cares about him and I think he really cares about her because they're both putting up with a lot of stuff, but it's just like, like, I just don't, I just, I don't get like how you can be that unaware of a culture that you're trying to integrate yourself into. And that like, I'm not saying change yourself for somebody, but I'm saying if you make the conscious decision to move to a different country because you care about somebody, you have to be willing to accept their, like that's part of that decision. So it's very frustrating in a lot of ways. It does not, it doesn't make Americans look great. Now a lot of things don't make Americans look great. It's very sad, but um, that's, that's, it's a bad one for me. That's, a, it's, it's rough. It's rough out here. Okay, quick check-in. So finished the foundation. Definitely took a hot minute to get it all like settled in. I did set it. The dog is currently behind me sneezing and trying to dig into the carpet. Could you not? Bud, that's carpet. I like it, I do like it. It's definitely one of the stronger foundations I've tried recently. I just still stand by my favorites. I have to say my favorites are still the Cargo Swimmables, which the biggest issue with that is if you haven't tried the Cargo Swimmables, they're amazing, they're waterproof, they're seven shades. That's that's awful. That's a try. That's that no. There's there's nothing about that. I I don't have a shade personally that works for me. I buy the medium light shade and the light 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 shade and then I mix the two because it's the only way that I can make it work. So yeah, so that's definitely a detriment, but I do love the formula of it. Um, and then the Tarte Shape Tape one, I really love. And the, people have complaints about that one as well because it does have limited shades as well. It does have more than seven, but it's still, the shade variations on the, both of those are a little bit rougher. This one, I like it, but I told Nikki like it's still on sale at Ulta and if I really loved it, I was gonna buy two more um, because I wanted to, I like to have backups, you guys know that. I have tons of foundations right now and this is not like, I, I can either wait for it to go on sale or if I'm out of it, I'm not gonna be horrifyingly sad. So good formula, just not, my absolute favorite. Um, I just set it with banana powder um, just because I thought like 
I felt like that would kind of work really well with this particular shade and everything. So that's all set and everything. Um, I'm not gonna do my contour and stuff on screen for you, but I'm gonna show you what I'm using. So I've got this pure, it was a pure times boxy charm little release. I'm gonna use this particular shade for my bronzer, which I use as contour, so my, my contour. Um, and then I got, this was also pure, uh, one of the pure BoxyCharm things that I got a while ago, like when I first joined BoxyCharm. This is the Midnight Masquerade Face Palette. And I'm going to use this nice dark berry shade as my blush today. I got this Elevation Palette, this little mini guy that I love. This is one of my favorite highlight palettes, especially for traveling because it's so compact. I'm gonna use the center shade because that's my favorite shade in that. So we're gonna do that off camera um, and then we'll come back and we will continue talking about 90 Day Fiance and I will do my eye makeup. Okay, I did my face. My contour is a little darker than I normally go with. It looks a little bit murky, but that's just, it's a darker shade and I knew it was gonna happen. So it is what it is. No, I was gonna like exactly what happened, so. Uh, I did also do my lipstick. I used the Pure 4-in-1 Lip Duo. Um, I don't normally use the gloss, but I do like the gloss. I just am not a big gloss person. But this lip color is one of my go-tos because, oh, I got it on my teeth. It dries down really nice, nice and matte. Um, it's a little bit pinker, so a lot of times I'll mix it with a brown or a darker shade if I want it to be a little bit less like this. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it, but like if I just don't want it to be quite this, I mix it with something. But I figured it'd be fine for today. Continuing on with the pure theme and the four in one theme, because that's what it's the four in one primer and the foundation and then the lipstick. And so, it, yeah. I want to use the mirror to do this, but I don't think, like with all the studio lights, I don't think I'm gonna be really able to tell if the lights on the LED mirror help. And um, it's just gonna make it harder for you guys to watch me do it. So I'm not going to do that as much as I want to, because I think that's a big selling feature for this particular palette is the fact that it comes with this cute little mirror. All right, back to 90 Day Fiance. So we were talking about, is it Brittany? Is that her name? Brittany and uh, Yasmin? Yasmin, yeah. Is that right? Okay. We're talking about them, but that's not the goal. The goal is I would like to talk about some of our top favorite toxic couples. So couples that should not be together or did not work out. If you guys watch it, I would love to hear your thoughts on some of the more popular couples. Cause I think the, the ones that most of us know are the ones that are more toxic. There are a lot that I really liked and I just kind of forget about them cause they didn't have enough drama. It sounds terrible, but like they decided to be on like for like a season or two. And then they were like, no, we're gonna go live our lives. Like most people would choose to do. And um, you just kind of forget about them because they just didn't have like that juicy drama that some of these more famous ones do. So of course I think like the biggest one would be, oh God, the fallout on this is awful. Oh, it's rough. My nose, it's, oh, my nose looks like I just have a ton of blackheads on it. <sighs> okay, I just off camera laid down a really light layer of baby powder on my face, just cause it's really easy to brush that away. Um, cause this is like this particular blue shade is just, it's a lot of fallout and it's having a little bit of trouble attaching. Now this is also a glitter pigment and I normally wouldn't use a glitter pigment for what I'm doing here, but I just really like the color and I wanted to highlight that. So we'll see if it winds up working or not. It's, it's building pretty well. It's just a lot of fallout at the moment. So that's why I did what I did. I'm curious to hear what's, if you guys watch the show, if you, um, follow any of the drama that's happened with it, who are some of your... Uh, favorite couples to hate. I, that's the only way to, to describe it. Cause like, I don't, I, I enjoy watching them cause they're a disaster. I don't like them. I just like watching it. It's terrible. It sounds awful. It's just such a unique show. And you see just so many different types of all, all types of people. But I'm gonna take, I'm gonna let Nikki take over for a second and kind of talk about his feelings on like, who is your favorite worst couple? It's hard because there are just there's a lot. There's a good, I can think of like three offhand. I would say the one that I can tolerate watching, but would genuinely prefer to not, would probably be Chantel and- Pedro? Pedro. Really? I, I would say them. I hate watching them if I'm being honest. For, for, for various reasons, for various reasons. Because the other couples, there's certain aspects of them that like, I just, I cannot stand and i mean even the one from um this current season of happily ever after andre oh andre and elizabeth i i, I legitimately I don't even want to watch them anymore. 
can't, I hate Andre. Like, I, yeah. it's so shitty to say, like, I shouldn't say that I hate somebody I don't know, but like Andre is the biggest misogynist. Yes. And he doesn't do, like, he's moved to America. He's now a citizen. He doesn't work. Yep. They have a child. He still expects to be the man of the household. Like, and I'm sorry, like, it, as, as, as much as I say, if you're an American who moves to another society, you need to respect their culture. The same thing, if you move to America, you need to, you definitely keep pieces of your culture, but also understand that you're changing the environment you're living in and that the culture is different. It's, it's a mutual thing. Like, you have to respect each other's culture in order to make a relationship like that work. And I just, like, he just is so, he's awful. Like, truly awful. Like, I, yeah, I I do agree. I wasn't even I, counting I them. Don't even want to watch them. Anymore. I do agree I, with that. Yeah, and the, the like issue is, I don't like her because she, like, first of all, her family pays for everything. And then he's, like, so, just so rude to her family and talks shit about them all the time. And it's just... Like, I don't understand how you can expect somebody who doesn't owe you anything to bankroll. Well, first of all, nobody owes you anything, but somebody who literally owes you nothing to bankroll your whole life and then you're just gonna treat them like they're somehow hindering everything you do. Like, bro, how about you fucking pay for your own way for anything? And I, it just, it, I just, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know, I don't get it. I, disgusting, it's disgusting anyway. Yeah, so not, I wasn't even thinking about them. I don't count them. For me, my favorite toxic couple, honestly, because they're just so crazy interesting to watch, are Colt and Larissa. They're just, yeah. everything about it is wrong. It doesn't work. She, I mean, they were married for less than six months and she was arrested three times. Yeah, I just wasn't, um, I was thinking about them, but, I wasn't really considering them because they're not technically together. No, but it's but neither are George and Anfisa. But George and Anfisa are one of the OG. That's like that's like people talk about 90 Day Fiance and they think of George and Anfisa. That like, and I truthfully, were they toxic as hell and and both like awful people? Kinda, yeah. I mean, I don't want to say they're both awful people because like everybody has bad moments. And unfortunately, when your life is on camera all the time you see so many more of your bad moments so it's not fair to say that they're like bad people but they were definitely not good for each other and they definitely shouldn't have or have been together yeah, they were oil and water but he lied to her and she was very honest about what she wanted she wanted to come to america and be a rich housewife and he was like i can afford that and then she shows up and she expects to be like a billionaire's housewife and he like he made a lot of money but not enough to buy her like a fifty thousand dollar dress and a two hundred thousand dollar engagement ring, which is what she wanted. So he was easily making a couple hundred thousand dollars a year, but, but not enough to afford that. Right. I mean, like, who can? Very few people can, and and I think that's also part of the issue. Is especially, I will say, uh, just with this palette, I used that light shade that I first pointed out as the blending shade. It was too light, so I went in with the darker brown shade on top of it, and it's working really nicely to kind of blend, blend out those harsh edges of the blue. Um, I'm liking a lot what's happening right now. So just to talk about the makeup, so we still stay on focus of that this is a, this is about makeup review, but also uh, talking about 90 Day Fiance. So like, I don't know. I, she was very honest and he was more dishonest. So it's like as, as terrible as she was to him in a lot of ways, cause she was, she wasn't great. But you gotta have to respect that she at least told, she told him the truth in a lot of ways. Like she, you knew what she wanted. She wanted like, you know. If I had to list my, my five toxic couples, and this is this is not in any particular order. Just thinking about who are the most toxic in the show. The most toxic on the show, I would say it's Andre and Elizabeth, Darcy, and literally anyone that she's around. Um, Chantel and Pedro, uh, George and Anfisa, and then um, Danielle and Mohammed. I would say those are probably the top That's good. five okay. most toxic in my opinion. I'm gonna say Danielle and Muhammad definitely. That was, yeah. but he was straight up using that her, and that bad. was that was just a really bad situation. I I genuinely feel bad for her because she got used and she just wanted to find somebody to love her. I I feel bad. She was very dumb, but at the same time, like you have to, you have to understand like where she was coming from. So definitely them. I'm gonna say, oh god, I can't remember her name right now. The one from Tan, the other one from Tanzania. The one, yeah, come on, lazy. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm talking about? You're... Yes, I know exactly what you're talking about. His name starts with an A and I don't remember. I always want to call her Danielle because she reminds me a lot of she, Danielle. Yes, yeah, she does. Like a really young Danielle. I'm going to see it and I'm going to be like, duh. Yeah, I know. That's the issue when you've watched, wa we watched these shows so long ago and we're watching the current seasons, but they're currently not on it, so. 
Nicole and Azan. Yeah, Nicole and Azan. Definitely they're two. George and Anfisa, without a doubt. Colt and Larissa, without a doubt. And then my last one, honestly, is going to be Big Ed and... Uh, Ro Rose. 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 Rose Marie. Rose Marie, yep. Because, and that's because of Big Ed, because Big Ed is a trash human. And I, you, I will stand by that statement for the rest of my life because he just was like, everything he did was just so self-centered and awful and disgusting. And she deserved way better. And it was really sad. He's like the garbage can that's filled with uh, the, the food that McDonald's throws away at the end of the night. If that was a person, that's Big Ed. I think that's, I think it's more like steak and shake. McDonald's is too high class. Fair Okay, so off camera, I did go ahead and do my um, my cut crease. We're gonna go in with the um, the little light pink glitter shade that I mentioned, and then we'll do the highlight with that beautiful blue, uh, white, pur uh, <laughs> blue, white, purple, blue, white glitter shade um, that I pointed out that's in the center. I will say, I really like this palette. The, the colors are blending out beautifully. I love pure for that reason. They always seem to blend really well. Um, so I'm enjoying it. I, the only thing I have to say about it is like besides the blue and then we'll see how that like really nice beautiful white shade goes. There's a lot of colors in this that I feel like are a little redundant. I've either seen them in other pure palettes or I've seen them in other palettes. So I think that the definitely the mirror and then those those two center shades are like the, the tickets. I just don't know if it's necessarily like if it's like something, unless you're like me who buys every palette that you see because you have a problem, then maybe I wouldn't recommend it. But I think it's still on sale on their website. Like it's pretty, it's pretty affordable right now, like maybe 20 bucks. So like definitely something to look into, just not one of my favorites from them. If you're going to buy something from them, I still would recommend the Crystal Clear Collection because I know that's still available and you get so much for such a good price with that. It's a high, I highly recommend that one. Anyway, that's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about this other palette today. So I'm gonna go in and we're gonna do the glitter shade. We're gonna see, we're gonna see how it looks when it's all said and done. Cause maybe I'll change my mind and be like, this is the most beautiful eye look I've created in a while. But anyway, back to 90 Day Fiance. Cause that's what we're doing here. God, that, gl that glitter actually is gorgeous. It's a lot, um, with the cut crease on, on top of the blue, it comes off a lot more silver than pink, um, but it has just a touch of that peach. It kind of makes the whole the whole scheme really work really well. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit more of the blue and just onto the back end. But yeah, I actually really like how that one played out. Anyway, off camera, Nikki brought up a good point. He said, these couples all seem to be like either they're like exactly the same and they're perfect matches for each other and they mesh super well, or they're like the exact opposite. Like there's no in between. It's not like they have certain similarities. It's like they seem to just be like perfect fits or like the opposite of what you would expect either one to be with. And I kind of have to agree. There's not a lot of, and I think maybe that's the issue. The, the couples that are the middle grounds, like the average couple that like they have so many similarities, but there's just a couple differences are the ones that are just like the the boring couples. And so you see them for one season and that's it. Like they just, they don't come back. Either the show doesn't ask them back or they realize that it's just too much stress to do it, which I can't imagine like it's not stress, but they, they're so, that's the thing is this show's been on and had so many seasons and so many couples. It's just so hard because like there are couples that are super well known that we haven't even talked. Angela and Michael. Angela and Michael are wild. And the sad thing is, is like, I don't, I don't like Angela but I don't dislike them together because I think they really love each other. So it's just like, you'd, even if you don't, like there's some people you don't necessarily like their personalities, but you're still rooting for them. And it's such a weird, but, like. Because the reason I didn't put them together in my top five. They're not married because, yet. And well, they're not yeah, toxic. Like, they're not toxic because they're. They're toxic together. No. Angela is toxic. Yes. Angela, by just herself is That's so true. toxic. That's absolutely and the fact. The I put Darcy by herself is because she's just a, she's so toxic that whoever she is with, it does not matter. She's going to bring out the, the sad thing is the other person. One of my favorite things that they've started doing recently is they do the pillow talks where they bring back, it doesn't even necessarily have to be couples who were successful. They just bring back people who were popular on the show or, or the, the viewers liked and they have them watch the current seasons, this glitter pigment, holy. So let's just talk about that. Let me, let me stop where I'm going for a second and talk about that. It laid down so well, just in this corner area. I, I'm tempted to actually go back and do another eye look with it. Maybe not on camera, maybe just for myself, where I am using this as like my center shade because it laid down, so, it's almost like a jelly as it comes up. Like I can't explain, it's almost like you're kind of like rolling it up 
that doesn't make any sense. It's not a jelly, but it kind of applies that way and it laid down so smoothly. The biggest issue I have with those chunky glitter shades is most of the time when you try and use them, they're very sporadic in application and this one is really doing just an excellent job. In fact, just because I wanna see, I'm gonna do just a little bit like up here. Like I, I feel like it just lays down so well. Yeah, I love that. I love that shade. That's beautiful. That that actually might sell me on the palette that they, I would recommend it just for that glitter shade because that really is doing a nice job of, let's see if I can make it work on this side too. Yeah, maybe it, maybe it too it's because like the base shade of it is supposed to be white. So it like, it if it is a little bit patchy in certain areas, it just kind of plays off in the white. I, oh God, it's so, can you see it on camera, Nikki? Oh God, it's, it's, it's really gorgeous. It is just truly, I'm truly in love with the shade. Anyway, back to the, back to the story. So Pillow Talk, they bring back their, some of the, the most well-received couples or people, or even if they're not role received, they just were talked about a lot. I think it's, they just bring back people who were popular on the show and they have them comment on the things that the current couples are going through and things that are happening because one, they've lived it. So they've all dealt with certain, you know, not necessarily the same exact circumstances, but they've dealt with certain things similarly. And it's just so entertaining. You get to see their takes on it. And a lot of their feelings are the same feelings that you're having as the viewer at home watching. And so they had Darcy and Stacy on for a couple episodes and Stacy is her twin. Darcy had a twin and, and Darcy was on with like four different guys, not quite. I think it was two different guys. And then maybe like there was like a, a half one. I don't know. I don't know. It's she started dating another dude. Well, yeah, I don't know. It's she's just, she's successful and she's single, but you can tell why she's single. She's a nuclear waste as a person. But the sad thing was watching her on Pillow Talk, she was very funny. I enjoyed, I enjoyed her personality more. I enjoyed watching her on Pillow Talk, talking about somebody other than herself more than I did in the like three seasons she was actually on the, sh the show. So it's just, it's just a challenging situation because you I mean definitely you're seeing people at their worst so yes reality shows have a, a great tendency of like being able to pull out the absolute worst in people but you also have to recognize like there's a reason there's a reason that glitter shade really pulled this whole eye look together I love it I love it I'm so in love with it I can't I can't even deal with it all right so this is the finished look I'm actually pleasantly surprised with how it turned out. I know I said like, I was kind of like meh about both things, but the look as a whole, I really like. The foundation has got a good amount of coverage. Um, it doesn't seem to be like patchy in any areas, which I was worried about. And the eye look turned out gorgeous. I'm, I'm shocked at actually how much I love it. And that glitter pigment is incredible. So I would definitely recommend checking them out. I don't think they're necessarily like on my must buys list, but they're definitely quality products. And I definitely would recommend checking out Pure just as a brand because I really do love them. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys enjoyed listening to us talk about 90 Day Fiance. Uh, we've got a lot of other things that we watch and things that we um, we enjoy to, uh, to discuss. So if you guys did like it, then uh, leave us a comment. Let us know if you watch the show as well. Let us know your opinions on different couples and things like that. If you did like the, the video, then give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, consider joining the Dark Angel family. We'd love for you to be part of our little YouTube community. And other than that, I hope you guys are safe and healthy and you have a beautiful day and you stay girly with a dark twist.